Well, Cindy was talking about uh, what we're going to do today. We're going to load the kiln. Now, some of the things that we're putting in the kiln are very wet right now. We have no intention of firing today. But uh, the kids' projects are going to go on the bottom of the kiln. We're doing a bisque fire. They're solid clay. And so to help keep it from exploding, which is always a bad thing, Cindy's poking a few holes in it. That'll make sure that the moisture on the inside of the object gets to the outside without going boom. And it'll help them dry out. We probably won't be firing these uh, for a week. This is our old kiln here. It's a 16 cubic foot cone art. It has done, as they say, yeoman service. And the old boy has kept on going. We converted it now to 208 volts from 240 because the power here in uh, the old school is a little different from most. And it's kiln loading time and the reason that I get to load the bottom of the kiln is because Cindy's not tall enough to reach in there. As you can see, it's a long way down to the bottom. We'll put these little guys in there. And I'm sure that uh, they'll be talking once it starts to warm up. So this is the second shelf load in the kiln. You can see we can mix bowls, mugs, different sizes. And we'll just keep on filling it up that way until it's absolutely full and it'll be time to fire. Okay, and you'll see as we get closer to the top, we've got plates hiding in there. We can stack them fairly closely. Talked about chips under big platters and what have you. Sometimes we'll stack plates. We just make sure that there's a chip between so that they both can shrink at their own rate. Uh, vases have to go in. We usually put them in the end closest to the thermocouples because once you get up to this end to in order to have the thermocouple out in the open you pretty well got to leave this zone open like that. So tall stuff goes in there. We've got three wine coolers, some teapots, a uh, funny little vase, things that have to be taller. Uh, you'll hear lots of people talk about you got to leave all of the shelves open, you have got to have zones open and airflow and all that. There isn't a lot of airflow in this kiln. It doesn't have a vent on it. Uh, it's electric fired so basically it's a big toaster. The way you fire your kiln is up to you. This is the way we fire ours and we've been doing it this way for years. So what works for you is what works for you. Anyway there's an idea of how things go into the kiln. And the kiln is loaded. You'll notice we're right up to the top, full to the brim. And as I said, some people bisking will stack things until they're crazy, but uh, we don't. We've got a big enough kiln here that we can, we have the luxury of letting things breathe a little bit. We've done it this way for an awful long time and we're not going to change now. You'll notice this little guy down here. We call him Ovaltine. He's what uh, I guess you'd call a kiln god. Not that we worship him or anything, but don't let him hear you say that. Uh, it's never been glazed. That's just the patina it has picked up over the years going through the many firings from all of the different glaze loads and bisque loads. And that's what he looks like. This is a bisque load. Kiln's full. We'll show you how we fire here in just a second. We'll start up the kiln and you can see us go through the, the steps of getting it going. Cindy's going to show you how to program the computer. Okay, to program a bisque, uh, we always fire time and temperature. So I'm going to start from the beginning. I, I'm enter program. I always do enter program number one because the bisque is the first firing in the process. And so I'm going to enter that. I like to have seven segments, means seven different intervals or sort of steps as you walk up through the firing process and walk down the steps. Now I want the first is going to be the first step, the first ramp up into your into your firing. I like to go slowly. I'm going to go 50 degrees an hour. So I that's 50 degrees for the for to 185 degrees. And this is Fahrenheit. We're going to keep it under boiling. If water boils, water to steam has an expansion rate of 1 to 1600. If you go blowing through the, the boiling point, 
blowing through is the operative word here, it will it will explode. We have um, we've been firing slowly for years and have never had anything blow up. I'm going to go to 185 degrees and I'm going to hold it there for, this is four hours. Every kill mode is different. I've got those wine coolers in there. I want to make sure they're completely dry. I'm going to hold that for six hours. And now the next ramp, I'm going to go to 100 degrees an hour. And I'm going to take it out to 200 degrees. I'm still below boiling, but the clay is hot enough and the moisture is being forced out. I'll hold it there for another two hours. So now I've got uh, a few hours to get up to 185. I've got about, I don't know, 10 hours in there. We fire 8 to 12 hours on below boiling on our bisques all the time. I'm in there for two hours. So the next ramp, the next stage I'm going to walk up. I'm going to go pretty quickly, 350 an hour to 900 degrees. I'm not going to hold it. I'm going to slow it down. There's a crystallization period there. There's my hold, which is zero. Crystallization period there, I'm going to go through slowly through 9 to 12. And I'm going to go, uh, now we're at 1200 degrees. I'm not going to, I like that, I'm not going to hold it 12. My next ramp is I'm going to go fairly quickly, but not that fast because the old boy is old and tired. I'm going to move it up to close to bisque. And so I get it to 1700. I'm not going to hold that there. So my hold is zero. And now the next one, I always go to 110 degrees to cone. I read some are supposed to be 108, but I live loose. <laughs> We're going to go to 110 to, to, well, to cone. I say cone loosely. We don't fire to cone. We fire time and temperature. I like to fire a bisque to 1850. I'm going to hold it for a half an hour. And then I'm going to... My next ramp, my next stage, is I'm going to let it cool down. If you have a very uh, empty bisque, sometimes in a 16 cubic foot kiln, if we're pushing stuff through, we can have not that much in the kiln. But I want to make sure it doesn't drop like a stone out of an airplane. So 600 degrees is fairly quick for a bisque, but you wouldn't want to drop any faster than that. I'm going to, so that controls the cool down to 900. I'm past crystallization, and I'm not going to um, hold it there. We're free to go. I don't want an alarm on this thing. And my programming is complete. So now I'm just going to start the kiln. And that's the bisque. Uh, like I said, we've been doing it for years this way. It works for us. There the old boy kicks in. And I do say old boy, but he's a good old boy. <laughs> <laughs> he has fired, I have no idea how many kiln loads this thing has fired. We bought it, I think, in 2001. And it's probably, f oh, well, hundreds of loads of pots. Which means we've made hundreds of loads of pots. So in a couple of days, if all goes well, we'll be opening up the kiln and taking the bisque load out.